Right, that's it, we're recording. Right then, so it's the fir first time we've done this for ages actually. We've had lots of adventures and we haven't done a video diary for ages. I've even been, this time I'm a bit more prepared, a bit more professional. So basically this, this one we were going to talk about life in the motorhome Hi. helps us reduce our impact, doesn't it? So I was, I was sort of thinking of all the ways Yes, we are spending money on diesel and we're burning diesel. But I just think of the way that we live our life now is we are so hyper conscious of absolutely everything else just because we have to. Um, so I've kind of my, my routine now is that in the week that Arthur's in uh, in Pershaw at school, that's that's when I restock the motorhome so we've uh, we go to the, the amazing empty jars refill shop in Evesham I just love rocking up with my Kilner jars uh, Marino is so he's one of the owners uh, is so passionate about reducing impact and avoiding plastic and um, eating and using organic products so I actually love going in just to chat with Marino. Um, but yeah, I, I love the fact that I've really, really significantly cut down our actual waste because we just rarely buy products in packaging. Um, the, the majority of the, the things that we buy from Marino, so they don't at the moment sell anything perishable like vegetables or fruit, um, but we would get everything else from them. Um, like nuts and seeds and herbs and spices and soap, uh, washing powder, all that sort of stuff. I mean, I, I actually don't buy that anymore anyway. Um, but so, so yeah, I, I, as far as the products we buy, um, we're pretty low impact. And when we do buy anything perishable like fruit and veg, um, that still has been coming from Abel and Cole. So that is, they are everything organic and they're, a B Corp company, so they're very purpose driven. Um, so on the sort of food and drink side of it, we are we're super low impact. Um, as far as electricity, I love being in here. I just absolutely love being in here because there is just one 100 watt solar panel on the roof, and that charges just one 100 amp hour leisure battery in the floor. And that does our, well, my mobile, Arthur's Nintendo, his tablet. Um, what else have we got? My laptop, my monitor screen, because I do like working with a bigger monitor battery screen. Packs. Battery packs. We use battery packs in the daytime and recharge them at night time. We've got the 4G and 5G router. Outside of that, we don't use hair dryers. We don't use kettles. We don't use the Hoover. So our electricity needs are minimal. And with a shift in how we've lived our lives we're able to to do that um uh so yeah as, I, I love being in here because our solar is provided for free by the sun um now it's going to be interesting as we get into winter to see if the 100 watt solar panel is still enough the thing is it's it's even quite an old solar panel so it's probably there's probably much more efficient solar panels now but it was on the roof um, when when I bought the camper, the the, the camper well, motorhome is already twenty years old. So kind of the emissions produced from creating it are sort of long been consumed. So um, so yeah, pretty pretty happy with solar electric. Um, and then we we do have onboard gas. So the gas runs the fridge, and I'm I'm really surprised how efficient the fridge is. Even on a really low setting, the fridge is nice and cool. Um, I think in, when do we get the motorhome? It was the end of March. So April, May, June, July, uh, almost five months. I've bought two gas bottles. And the early part of that time, it was really cold. So we did have to have the heating on a little bit. Um, so ultimately, uh, and then we would cook on gas as well. But, but again, because I know there's a finite amount of gas on board, and because I'm conscious of my consumption anyway and my waste, uh, I'm super conscious as to the sorts of things that I cook. Um, 
to reduce the gas use as much as possible. And then water, like Arthur made a lovely comment is a little while ago, um, and we I think maybe we'd run out of water and we'd refilled or something like that, and, and Arthur went and turned on the tap and it and water came out and he's like, Ah oh, brilliant water. Like when when does so anybody it's like finally Finally, yeah. Well like, when but when does anybody say that in a house or a building where we totally take for granted sterilised, drinkable, running water. Whereas in the camper, we've got a 70 litre tank. Uh, we were just actually, it's, it was kind of um, nice to, to do this diary here because we are actually at the centre for um, alternative technology, CAT, oh, cat. cat in, in Wales, in Snowdonia. So that's the, the centre is all about finding alternative and green ways to live so we can be carbon neutral, so we can save our future ultimately by preserving a planet that humans can live on. So, um, so yeah, it kind of made sense to, to do this here. And one of the stats we were reading was the average amount of water used per day in a washing machine is, what was it, 60, 60 litres of water. And that's... 70. All, was it 60 or 70? Okay, it was okay. Yeah, r roughly the entire water tank we have in here. The, at the moment, um, we haven't used that entire water yet in a week so um so yeah we, we are super low impact as far as water in terms of flushing the toilet or washing up we do uh, i don't heat the water at all so everything's cold water um which arthur was a bit scared of having a shower for the first time but you did have a shower the other week didn't you and you said it was okay just something to get used to isn't it of course it'd be nice to have a nice bubbly bath but the point of how we have no bath yeah we have no bath i mean that that's that's another thing it's kind of it's adapting to a new way of life which is something we all have to do if 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 we as human beings want to exist in a few generations time then we have to adapt and i like doing this i i like that life is a bit more difficult um because everything feels like it has so much more value like Arthur's comment wow we've got water that's so awesome um and then sort of the, the other way I've been helping is by washing this doesn't sound good but I'm good with it but by washing in um, in rivers and in the sea so I'll have one uh, proper soap wash a week that's all with handmade soap uh, I made a batch about a year or two ago and I've got so much soap left that's another super low cost way also a way to avoid toxins and chemicals is to make your own soap yep. just go on to uh, naffordjunction.co.uk and have a look for uh, have a look on the roadmap and in there will be a link with some instructions of how to make soap and how to make body wash uh, how to make shampoo all that sort of stuff bit of a sidetrack so um so that's another way that we really reduce our water usage um because i'm using the natural resources wherever possible um and then a kind of a, a bit more detailed thing i I've, I've for a long time now used the kogo carbon tracker mobile app so it just links to my bank and my credit cards and based on it working out an average carbon emission per pound spent on different things um it tells me my carbon emissions for each month and then based on that i go to south pole and i look for carbon offset uh, emission reduction projects but the difference here that i've seen with south pole is the projects that i buy they are actually reducing emissions now like absolutely we need to rewild we totally totally need to do that but planting trees won't be a benefit until some point in the future as far as reducing emissions so we need to do that at the same time as reducing emissions elsewhere in the world through uh, emission reduction projects um, where where they are literally reducing emissions now so um, so I'm pretty happy with using South Pole to offset the emissions I, that I haven't been able to reduce just yet um, I don't know what, what what do you think, Mister? You're you're pretty low impact, anyway, to be honest. But how have you 
felt with life in the camper compared to life in a house. How do you feel about water and gas and yeah, being in a being in a camper? Have you missed anything? Um, I've missed having a bath. You missed having a bath, and yeah. And sometimes it's a bit scary when we barely got any water left and we're in the middle of nowhere. A bit scary? Why, why is it scary when we don't have any water left? I feel like I'm being in the question show. <laughs> well, that is the point of it, isn't it? We're sort of helping other people to see what our life is like and if it inspires a few people, then that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. So a bit scary, but that's good though, isn't it? We should be scared because if everybody keeps consuming the same amount of water as they do and if climate change keeps getting worse like it is then in the next 10 years or less there will be water shortages so people will turn on their taps in their homes or flats or houses or buildings and there won't be any water uh, the, the the stat the what did we wow. see earlier on 70 liters of water every day on average per person for flushing the toilet that's scary stuff isn't it so that's why when we did have the house and we were there we started flushing the toilet with also, rainwater get a life saver bottle or jerry can not the straws the straws are terrible well the, the straws aren't terrible but they only filter a small amount of water and they don't filter as many viruses and bacteria but yeah the life saver bottle if you bottle, want the most amount of water get the jerry can but it's like a it's yeah that is next on our list so we can be even more off grid the... when you gonna get it yeah so we can be even more off grid the plan is to buy a lifesaver jerry can and we would basically it's 25 liters and we'd refill it from rivers as we're driving past them so there you go this is a lifesaver bottle so um, i've had, had that for 15 or 16 years bit broken it's been Watch through it. the wars in that time. Um, so yeah, we basically, that seems like the best on the market as far as its filtration. It's also got a carbon filter at the top. So the water's sweet and you literally can fill up with any water you want. Except um, like really, really muddy, gross water. Well, if it was sludge, you wouldn't, I mean, that's not actually really water, is it? But, no, just um, like, so it's really muddy and full Well, no, the, um, the, point, the point is, this, I think, was originally designed for disaster situations where there's been an earthquake or a tsunami or something like that. You literally can put any water in it, any liquid, any water. Is that sludge? It, yeah, I mean, if it's sludgy, it's not going to filter it, is it? But um, So you could literally put it in um, dirty water and it's going to filter it for you. For us, we're lucky that generally we're travelling through beautiful parts of Wales in Snowdonia which is I'll just show you what the heaven favorite. looks like oh show you what the what the heaven looks like heaven oh. when you haven't got any more water nice. water <laughs> water but so yeah I mean I, I'm thinking so one, one thing I'm thinking is uh, I actually bought a funnel so the also the other plan is that we fill up the um, the water uh, onboard water tank Where's my bag? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we fill up the onboard water tank with um, water from a river because that's absolutely fine to wash in and also, to wash up in. Yeah. The water tank's just under. Was it? Was, yeah. What's a? Just under. Just under here. Just under there. So it's only small, so we've got right, to be conscious of how much we use because um, we don't. I, I can't find the camera. That's the camera. Um, uh, I can't do it. Um, so. Make this making it look really there, yeah. Like just underneath the sofa, yeah. That made it look really awkward. It was awkward, it was. You made it look awkward, um, yeah, so yes, I am. So that's it, really. We just, um, yeah, life in the motorhome has made us even more acutely conscious of our consumption because our fridge is smaller, our cupboards are smaller, everything's smaller, everything's smaller, and it, it forces us to even be his even brain better. is smaller. <laughs> My brain, hopefully, not. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, so that's it for this one. Is there anything else you want to say about our impact, mister? Reducing our impact? Um, Being good about what we consume? Buy organic stuff. Buy organic stuff, love it. So, um, 
that's it for now thanks for watching if you've made it this far if you do want some more hints and tips about living climate positive also, yes try getting second hand one six the, nice the, get an expensive hand second hand not second hand old motor home like our old bessie here old bessie yeah she's like how old is she 10 years 20. old 20 20 she was twenty-one thousand pounds so motor homes are two hundred thousand pounds so this is very cheap compared to that yeah i mean i, I couldn't have actually afford it anymore but this layout uh, anyway, we, we're sort of a bit one. off topic now, aren't we, on what we're talking about? There like, was another one that had bunk beds that we liked, like the posh one. Yeah, but, but the thing is, that's a waste of space, isn't it? Because we've got a bed above the cab over there, which and also is a, is a great, there. great use of space. And I just love the... Anyway, this is totally off topic for for for, for this one. But, um, but yeah, if you want some real hints and tips, if you want kind of 50 plus ideas to live climate positive, <laughs> things that are easy to do, things that take a bit more time to research then go to naffordjunction.co.uk and go to the roadmap. Or if you want six sim simple ways to get started with sustainability, go to vote on the same website. Uh, or if you don't want a bit more of an a la carte approach and you want to find some companies that are purpose-driven and can help you to live climate positive, then on the same website, naffordjunction.co.uk, have a look at the directory. Apart from that, you can find us on social media, on all the main channels. Uh, just find Nafford Junction. And uh, if we can inspire a few people along the way with living climate positive, but also help any single parents out there um, who may have gone through divorce and some tough times and are trying to do their best to inspire and educate and, and coach their child or children, then uh, hopefully these videos show that that's possible in a home, but also on the road. Yes. Thanks for watching and check back again soon.